Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with Sarah of Sasha and the Valentines. Thanks for making the time to chat with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, I know the band put out an EP prior to this upcoming album. I'm just curious, you know, this being your sort of full length debut, do you feel this sort of sets the stage in terms of the first impressions people will have of the band? Um, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, I think our first EP was kind of a race to get something out there because um, mm -hmm. we've been playing live a lot around Austin mm -hmm. um, with some songs in our back pocket and we just kind of wanted to be um, digitally present. So then um, by the time we were working on our album um, and decided to record it, COVID had actually already hit. So mm -hmm. we kind of were in a good spot good and bad um but good spot to really take the time and like work through it and kind of give it the production effort that I think a lot of these new songs deserve so mm -hmm. um it's definitely going to be like our big first impression for a lot of people here you know it's first interesting time. you mentioned the COVID times I, I wonder mm -hmm. if years down the road 10 years down the line if you'll associate this album with sort of this time period because you did record it during what is a weird time for everybody yeah, um, it's super funny because I feel like looking back at a lot of the songs, they were written not in COVID. So mm -hmm. they obviously deal with themes and and uh, relationships that happened before COVID hit. But um, you're right. Like when I think about the actual album itself and the time we spent recording it, it's very much like this memory of intimately only hanging out with my bandmates and, mm -hmm. you know, waking up and recording and then going home and still being with my bandmates and not really like playing out it kind of like gave us this really focused attention on it so that'll probably stay associated with it for a long yeah, time yeah i mean it must in a way it must be sort of like you're in this this creative vacuum yeah exactly it's like a weird amount of pressure on that uh, in that way but also a lot of space and freedom and time to mm -hmm. to put the right amount of work into it well, you mentioned the pressure of it. I'm curious as, you know, you're sort of on the eve of it. It's April 16th, I believe it, it officially uh, releases to the world. But, you know, what kind of emotions do you juggle with now as it's sort of done and you're just kind of waiting to the for the next phase of it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's super weird because anything else um, I've ever released in the past, we've kind of been able to stay connected in the music scene by playing out like mm -hmm. playing out was like a big part of our life and probably still will be in the future but right now it's just the waiting game and it um I do feel like I've been keeping myself busy with like uh all the extra stuff like music videos mm -hmm. and you know really like um delving into the design of the actual physical copies of the album and stuff which so I thought looked awesome I, lo I love the sort of retro <laughs> you know photo look to everything it just has a really cool cool vibe to it Thank you. Well, our, our bassist, John, um, they're uh, an amazing photographer. So uh, like almost everything we have is like their film, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's been like a lot of nerves and anxiety waiting for it and anticipation. I just hope that um, by the time it comes out, maybe we'll be able to play live shows mm -hmm. again. Who knows? Like it's just, it's all up in the air, but it's like the big thing that I'm, that we're all looking forward to. Yeah, that's something I didn't think about. Like when you're gearing up towards an album, you have the ability to sort of burn off energy on stage, but you don't have that right now. And so it, it's, right. <laughs> you, you can't even get the sort of instant feedback from a crowd unless you're doing sort of live streams and stuff like that. Right. It's, it's funny to think like, um, as I'm listening to the album and, you know, just over and over again, I'm like, are these songs getting stale? Like, do people even like these songs anymore? Like, which ones are going to hit? Like, usually you kind of gauge which ones are going to be you know the the bigger ones or the the quieter yeah. ones based on yeah audience feedback but it's so interesting to not have that <laughs> well you mentioned the specific songs i know you have the sort of first lead single coming out in uh, just a, just over a week now you know tell us a little bit about what goes into the process of deciding what that sort of first impression song is going to be for an album and, and how you guys as a group make that decision um yeah that's a good question um uh, from what we've discussed, I think it was a good idea to release something that we think a lot of people have heard in terms of like our, um, like intimate fan base. It's mm -hmm. not like everyone's heard them, but the people that have seen us live and especially like, um, the local scene in Austin knew this song, we played it since the beginning and it just wasn't really recorded. So we figured this would be such a good, like introduction of people, like 
kind of being like, hey, we're still here. Like, remember seeing us live, this is what it is. And then um, for the singles that are gonna come after it, I wanted like a good swatch of like the album because there are a lot of different tones we're setting. And mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted kind of like a good swatch of like what it's gonna sound like and getting people excited. And as you you look at that, the sort of the the relay of singles and the world we're in now where you can't really go out and promote an album live, like, did you guys have to sort of recreate the wheel on what you would do to to not only get the word out for for this particular album, but also just for the band in general at this phase in your in your lives as a band? Mm -hmm. um, it's so interesting because the whole music industry has just shifted to working digitally. So mm -hmm. it's really just heavily relying on like social media and um, blogs and, you know, live streams and, and Zoom interviews and, and yep. things like that. Like these things are becoming so important and a lot of people are finding their music and connecting to the musicians they like online. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something personally I, I haven't been good at in the past or not, I'm not totally used to, but um, it's kind of necessity based and it is changing the face of music. So um, we're going to be on board with it and just try to engage with people online as much as we can and as, as authentically as we can. Is it allowing you to look at stuff like the music videos differently and say, okay, I'm going to put mm -hmm. all my creative energy into this, you totally. know, because we can't do the other thing right now. Yeah, totally. Um, for our EP, I don't think we had any music videos. <laughs> um, it just like wasn't a priority, but now it's, it's like, I'm, I'm super excited about the videos and a lot of them are um, co-directed by us specifically and, mm -hmm. and some of them are produced by us so it's just like just other content and other creative ways we can um, engage with people really. Well again I know the band is is from Austin. Austin is such a creative sort of hip city. How much of that of what Austin is is also the band? Like how much does that creative mm -hmm. uh, vibe of a city impact your own creative vibe? Interesting. Um, well, actually, originally, um, the whole band were from Massachusetts, so we That's where I am went right to now. college. <laughs> really? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we went to college at um, uh, UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. so we all met in Western Mass and were, were um, really involved in that music scene for a long time, which is very different than Austin, but also just as active, so yeah. um, I feel like we've pulled creatively from, like, a lot of different spaces that we've been in um, like our bassist lived in Chicago for a while our drummer was in Hawaii um, I've kind of done my share of traveling around the U.S. to figure out where we wanted to end up and when we came to Austin um, I think the biggest impact Austin has had on us was the live music scene mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like um, funny but um, I think in general though like our, our taste and our style and creativity has really just come from all of our individual experiences and then us being together for so long as just friends. And um, so I'd like to think that like it transcends where we are mm -hmm. and and um, our stamp will kind of be on it no matter where we live. Very cool. Well, finally, Sarah, you know, as you sort of look back on your life, I'm curious, what would 10 year old Sarah think about what you're doing right now in terms of music <laughs> you're creating and, and, and this album? Oh my gosh, uh, that's so funny because uh, when I was in second grade, um, I remember they like asked you like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, I want to be a singer. And I didn't even sing. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm going to be a singer. And then like someone told me like, oh, be people don't just become singers. So like, it's hilarious that like I am, but you know, <laughs> um, but but more than that, like I've, I'm, you know, most of this album is like, primarily written by me like music and mm -hmm. vocal lines and melodies and everything so it just I think my 10 year old self would be pretty dang proud uh, high five from the 10 year old yeah. self <laughs> totally <laughs> she'd be super impressed <laughs> well how can people you know with the with the single due out and with the album you know a few weeks down the road beyond that what's the best way for people to connect with the band now um, we're really active on Instagram, so you can find us there. Um, we'll be posting about some live streams we're doing, um, but uh, mostly you can track our new music coming out on Spotify, um, SoundCloud, our videos we uh, will be out on YouTube, and then um, Oof Records is our label that mm -hmm. we love, and we're this is a new relationship, but a lot of our stuff is going to be on their website, so you can, you can see it there too. Great. 
Awesome. Sarah, thank you so much for making the time and for having Massachusetts roots. Now that I know that, I'm even more excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.